Hi, I'm Kiana Shaw, Master Life Coach and CEO of Lead Hership Academy. I train parents and teens to effectively communicate for the purpose of improving their relationships. One of the biggest questions I get from parents is, what's wrong with my kid? As I ask questions for clarity, I find that their kids are self-centered, disrespectful, have entitlement issues, and have no understanding of the family budget. However, the most common question I get from teens is, how do I communicate with my parents? Most teens want to talk to us, but have a difficult time for several reasons. In this video, I have taken the top three reasons why teens feel they can't communicate with their parents and created some tips. Let's get started. Tip one, recognize that your teen's not a baby. Our natural instinct is to be involved in every part of their lives has to change as they develop, even if we're close to them. There was a time when they needed you around to feed them, to bathe them, to transport them everywhere they needed to go. But just as you no longer need to feed them by hand or give them a bath you, or even follow them to school as, as they walk to school, you also no longer need to interject yourself into everything that they do. Allowing your teen to exercise her judgment and be herself rather than who you want her to be will help her be able to make age-appropriate independent decisions without cutting you off. Now let's be clear. Their need for independence doesn't mean that they can't stay connected to you. Requiring that your teen text you updates is a great way to always be in the know. Also, I am an advocate for the locator apps that are already on our kids' phones. In a day and age where children are being kidnapped and all kind of horrible things are happening to them, I am a strong believer that it is okay to use the locator app and take away that portion of your child's privacy. After all, they don't need that much privacy until they're out of your home. Giving your kids responsibility also creates interdependence. From creating the shopping list to being in charge of taking the car for oil changes and even setting up reoccurring payments on monthly bills to your account are all ways to give responsibility and allow our kids to earn their freedom. It is not a sign of a healthy emotional development for a teen to push parents away or for parents to let your teen push, push you away. That is actually a sign of a damaged relationship and that relationship needs to be repaired before you can move forward. So keep that in mind. Tip number two, listen, empathize, but keep advice to a minimum. It doesn't matter how good your advice is. Every time you offer it, you're giving your teen the message that she can't solve her problems herself. Be a sounding board, not a problem solver, unless she's in danger or you feel that, you know, it's something that you absolutely must interject in. Just be the sounding board and you'll find that your team will keep coming back for more. When they come to you with a problem, sit quietly and ask questions only for clarity. Before offering your advice, first ask, how do you feel about that? What do you think about her reaction? What would you do different? Allow your teen to impress you with how they would handle the situation. Oftentimes, they just need to say it out loud and hear their own words. You have already put everything inside of them that they need. So just allow them the freedom to make that decision. They trust you, which is why they're telling you about the situation. So it's not an opportunity for you to take over. It's an opportunity for you to learn just how mature your child is. Be available when your kid wants to talk. Parents usually try to schedule talks and that just does not work. Most kids don't keep an agenda and bring things up at a scheduled meeting and nothing makes them clam up faster than forcing them to talk. Most teens like to talk spontaneously, maybe over a late night snack or during a movie, but don't be afraid to solicit the help of their favorite aunt or uncle. You'll be amazed at how much more your teen will open up to them and what they can convince your teen to share with you. Also saying to your kid, I'll be in the den watching TV if you want me, or I have to run to Aunt Susie's house, but don't hesitate to call my cell phone if you need me. Those are things that help your children open up. 
Kids who feel that other things are more important to their parents than they are often look elsewhere when they're emotionally needy and that is just as much our loss as it is theirs. Here's a bonus tip. Welcome your teen's friends over. The truth is you want her hanging out at the house. You want to know her friends. So keep snacks available and greet them with a smile when they pile in unexpectedly. You want to be the cool mom. Even when you're tired, still invite her friends um, into the house with open arms. Understand, though, that there's a difference between the mom that's cool and the mom that doesn't have a life that her friends feel sorry for, so they let her hang out with them. Keep that in mind. You want to make sure that you're open and that they feel that they can come to you, but you don't want to be overbearing and that you're, so that your child doesn't feel that they can't come to you. There you have it, a few easy things you can start to implement today. I am Kiana Shaw, CEO of Lead Hership Academy, and I am your parent and teen advocate. You can reach me at leadhershipacademy.org or at villageoftruth.org for your teen. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you soon.